power suit and Rugrat socks. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect combo. All right, the friends, this video is about why I will never be an intuitive eater. Intuitive eating is super popular right now. Everybody wants to try it for weight loss or just for health. And we're also getting asked by a lot of you guys what our opinion is. Here's the definition for intuitive eating. It's an eating style that promotes a healthy attitude toward food and body image. The idea is that you should eat when you're hungry, and stop when you're full. I totally agree with that. And actually, as babies, we're born with natural intuition about eating. It's not until you start growing up and you see your parents and everyone around you eating differently or saying, you know, certain foods are good, certain foods are bad, you should eat this, eat less, eat more, that we start taking on those habits. So kids, if they're left alone, they will eat what they want, when they want, until they're satisfied, they'll stop when they're full, and they'll just live their life, love food, and choose what they want. However, they don't stay like that because they start taking on habits of those around them, which is what happened to me. I was an intuitive eater. Then at five, I started being told that my stomach was big and that I should eat less and that certain foods that I ate were bad and made me have a big belly and other foods were better. And then I had two different houses. I spent a lot of time at my Nona's house, which was an Italian lifestyle. And then I spent time at my mom's because my parents were divorced. Whenever I went to my Nona's, which is where my dad lived, I was told you need to eat more. And I really remember this time where I was eating toast for breakfast and I wanted to go and play and I handed the toast to my Nona. She took all the bread off of the crust that was left over and said, no, you need to go back and finish it. And that's what happened pretty much my whole time there. Anytime that I was finished eating, I would be told I needed to stay at the table until I was done. Then I would go home and I would think I needed to eat more and I would be told, no, you need to eat less. So it got very confusing for me. And from there, I started feeling bad about my body and thinking that it was the way I was eating that was causing that. That caused me to develop binge eating problems and emotional eating. And my whole childhood, leading all the way up into my 20s, I really struggled with using emotional eating to cope. I used it as medication. I was diagnosed with binge eating when I was in my 20s. What happened was growing up using emotional eating all the time, I would eat past fullness. So I, I love intuitive eating for the definition, but I couldn't do that because I was eating for emotional reasons. So I would eat way past fullness. I would stuff myself. My belly would expand so much. It would be so distended. And then I would wake up and do it again and again and again. Doing that really messed with my hunger cues. And most of the time, because I was emotional eating, I would think that I was hungry, but it was actually that I just wanted to use food to cope. So I didn't know when I was hungry. I didn't know if it was for emotional reasons or if it was because I was actually hungry and I couldn't stop because I was eating for emotions. I would eat way past fullness all the time. Then when I wanted to lose weight because I actually gained so much weight with my binge eating issues and because my intuitive eating piece of me was broken, I reached my heaviest weight of 275 pounds and it caused massive health problems like sleep apnea, plantar fasciitis. I knew I needed to deal with the binge eating and lose weight. Everything that I researched said intuitive eating will help you fix it. But I couldn't trust my intuition with that. I didn't know when to eat. I had no clue. I was like, um, I was like a child that was broken. I had no idea when I was full because I ate anyway or when to eat. And I'll uh, just chime in here with me and Nicole's genetics. So this is another thing that we'd like to just add in about each person's body type, why it might be a little tougher for some people to do intuitive eating, especially us. Yeah. Um, 
me and Nicole can put on muscle and fat really, really, really easily. And we carry our belly, we carry our fat in our bellies. So yeah. our appetites are humongous. Yeah. Like me and Nicole can eat and eat. And then half an hour later, we're like, we're hungry again. And everyone around us is like, are you nuts? And yeah, we're like, no, we're actually hungry again. And so if we listen to our, <laughs> our broken intuition, uh, we would be back, like I used to be close to 400 pounds. I'd be back there very quickly. I can eat almost as much as Kyle. So we found in order to lose the weight, yes, we needed to be satisfied. We wanted to feel full. We needed to love our food, but we also needed to eat in a calorie deficit so we could lose weight. We had to pick foods that we loved, but we needed structure because the intuition was broken. So we used portion control to create that structure for us. It allowed us to eat what we loved every single day, look forward to our food. And through the portion control, we discovered there were lower calorie foods that you could eat a ton of high volume that would really actually fill your belly and stuff like popcorn and pretzels and fruit. And we started eating all of that stuff and we were able to lose 130 pounds each, keep it off for six years and actually recover from the binge eating issues. So we get asked all the time about, emo about intuitive eating and from the questions that we get asked, it seems like a lot of people have an emotional relationship with their food. And right now with what's going on in the world, especially where we live, it's a full lockdown again. And everything that you see ads, commercials, radio, it's all promoting you can have dates with your food. And there's really nothing else open. You can buy alcohol and you can buy food. That's and we're, we're literally, where we live in Canada, we're not allowed to see anyone else. No, you can literally go to drive throughs and grocery stores. And the grocery stores are all roped off except for the foods. So and you nothing, can't buy anything else. And nothing, like sometimes the fresh food is very scarce, but the junk food and the fast food restaurants are always open. And all, yeah, you can buy chips and chocolate and all that stuff but like you can't even buy underwear and shoes here no we can't go see if our family members sick if something happened to them we can't even see them but you can buy food so if intuitive eating works for you or it's something that you want to try that's great but for Kyle and I intuitive eating doesn't work we found we love the concept of intuitive eating, but we have to mesh it together with calorie counting. So we find foods that we love that satisfy us and fill us up, but we also have to stay within a structure and that's why we stay within a calorie window. And for myself, it's 1900 calories right now. And for Kyle, it's about 24, 2500. Like if we just went full, we're just doing math and we're doing calories and no taste, no, no. love for food, no. that wouldn't work either. So we're not saying like the intuition is bad. It's a mix. It's a mix. And you know, so on the intuition side, we have to love the food to stick to it and we obviously care about taste we make we try to make really good recipes that taste good but yes. the 50 50 is mixed with the calorie window or else we get into health problems exactly we would eat and eat and eat we wouldn't stop we love food we're always hungry and we gain weight very easily so we need to stay in that mesh so Hopefully this answers your questions. And if you want tasty recipes, we actually have two in the Power 13 cookbook and you can use our discount code to save 15% off down below. We also have two complete weight loss guides, exactly how we lost our first and next 50 pounds, exact portions, meal plans, and family friendly recipes. It's all in there. We ate a balance the whole time, loved our food. Two videos right here. Now let's power suit flex. Whoa. And go and squat, <laughs> and yes, and yes, and one, and two, and three, we love you. I can shake my beam right here. Whoa, we're gonna have to put a Big Mac over that. Put a power suit Big Mac. Well, I just have a regular Big Mac, so. We'll pretend it's a power suit one. Bye guys, love you. See ya. Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here, heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it. Don't give up.